Hi everybody, it's Andrea here and today I'm going to give you a quick review of the book Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Now this was the main book in the August of Lima Crate uh, subscription box. I've only just finished it but I thought I'd give you my thoughts. Now like most people I've seen a few reviews about this book. I found the first hundred pages quite difficult because it is the first in a new series. Um, it's got a lot of world building to do in it, it's got to give you a lot of the folklore and the history of the place. Um, so in the first hundred pages it's quite slow. Once you hit the time where Mia arrives at the Red Church for her assassins training, um, you really, really, really get into it and it starts speeding up pace. Now one of the ways that Jay Kristoff does his world building is he'll say something and then he'll footnote it at the bottom, the extra information. So you've got to be careful not to actually miss the asterisks that tell you that there's a footnote. Many times I was reading through it and I would just um, read to the bottom of the page, notice there was a footnote and then have to go back and um, scan the pages for where the asterisk was to find out what it was in relation to. But that's because I get so engrossed in a book that I just don't, I'm not paying attention to things like asterisks, it just looks like a full stop at the end. Some of the footnotes were really quite funny, so there's kind of like a Terry Pratchettness with it. Not in the sense that the whole book's funny, it's not, but some of the way he would say things and then he'd put a little comment afterwards was quite reminiscent of the way Pratchett used to do stuff. I loved this book. It, when it got towards the end of the assassins training and they were getting up to initiation and things were really getting um, tense between all the acolytes, oh my god, it was fantastic. Mia is a great character. She's not unlikable. She's an assassin but you do quite like her. She is a character that you can relate to, that you want to you want to win, you're like, come on Mia, you can do it, especially towards the end. Um, I found that at the end, oh, the last four or five chapters of my heart was pounding with the, the tenseness of what was going on. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, come on, come on. And I must admit, I finished this at 20 to two in the morning because I had to finish it. I wanted to finish it because I had to know what was gonna happen. And I have to say, it was brilliant. Now, by the sound of it, at the end of it, there's a little bit at the end which says, let me just get on to it before the last maps. But after all, this tale is only one of three. So I'm going to assume it's going to be a trilogy. And I can't believe I'm going to have to wait at least a year for the next book in this series to come out. I will certainly be picking up the second book in the series or the trilogy by Jay Kristoff. And I will be definitely going to pick up some more of Jay Kristoff's work. I loved this book. It was absolutely fantastic. Although I will say before I read the second in the series, I will probably reread this one as well. So this one I would have given a four and a half out of five stars. Um, because it really was that good afterwards. It just dropped half a star because it was slow, slow to get going. Brilliant. Characterizations were great. I did like the way when they were telling, because it's set both in the past and in the present. So it tells me a story when she was a young girl and then when she's 16 and she goes to the church, uh, the Red Church, and the past, so up until when she gets to the church, all well, the past of it is told in italics. And then when she's in the present, is told in normal font. So, for instance, her shadow cat, Mr. Kindly, is sort of like drinks her fear so she doesn't fear anything. In her past, he talks in normal font and she's in, everything else is in italics. When, when she's in the present day, everything is in normal font and he talks in italics. And it's really, really cleverly done. So, yes, 4 out of 5, for, well, 4.5 out of 5 for Jay Kristoff's Nevernight. Can't wait for the next one. Well, that's what I thought about it. But what did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below and maybe we could have a discussion. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.